I'd like to show you just a very short little uh, topic, or a little aside, called translational equilibrium. Maybe let's actually just define it here. So we can say that something is in translational, because it turns out there's all sorts of types of equilibrium. Now what equilibrium implies is things are the same. So if something is in translational equilibrium, what that means is this. Now you might think, well, what does this mean? This is sigma notation. This means the sum of all the forces. So maybe we'll define that like that. So the sum, in other words, when you add up all the forces, the sum of all the forces equals zero. What that really means, then, that implies that the there's no resultant force. And if you have no resultant force, that's like saying, well, F net equals zero. Oops, I made it seem like it's F net. It's supposed to be a little subscript here. It's supposed to be a little lowercase. So F with a little lowercase. F net equals zero. So if you have all your forces adding up to zero, that means you have no resultant force. And that means you have Net, the net force is zero. Now, this is a key thing right here to realize is that, uh, well, maybe uh, we'll do it just with a question here. Yeah, so here's a question. Does an object with zero acceleration need to be at rest? And you might think, oh, it's probably a trick question. I guess the answer is probably no, but I don't know why. And it turns out, well, it is no. You don't have to be at rest in order to have zero acceleration. Now, I talked about acceleration where I should have talked about forces. But I've been sort of implying this for a little while. It's sort of related to, well, Newton's second law, which we're about to learn, which says that, uh, well, the force, the net force, is related to an acceleration. But a lot of people think that if something's not accelerating, then it must be at rest. So I'm going to say, well, no. You can have, you can have, let's say, a car moving but uh, all the forces acting on it can cancel out. So if that happens, so here, let's say, so you're in your car like this right here, there it is, it's my little convertible car, there I am. And if I'm in my car, and let's say I draw my forces as uh, blue lines this time, so downwards force of gravity, I'm going to have an upwards force that's normal, that's uh, given to me by the ground. And let's say I have a forward force, because I've got sort of, yeah, some sort of forward force given by the engine and all that result. But I've also got drag and friction and things like that. So oh, we're not really going to call it thrust. Yeah, I suppose we can call it thrust. It's a forward force. So let's say all these are here, add up. So this one is exactly equal to and opposite to that one. The forward one is exactly equal to and opposite to that one. And yet, I could still be moving. I can still have a velocity. If I'm still actually moving like this, well I can say that an F net is zero. So now it doesn't mean that I'm not moving. See, so I'm still moving. But the key thing is this. This is the key thing. It is just, so it is not accelerating though. Oops. So if something is not accelerating, the key thing then to really get from this is even more important, so I'll put a bunch more stars, is, um, well, if something is not accelerating, then we say, so if F net equals zero, in other words, if it's not accelerating, we say it has constant speed or constant velocity, depending on your situation. So constant speed or velocity. So what this means, this is the key thing right here, is that um, if we have a situation where there's no acceleration, if acceleration is zero, then we have a constant speed, which means your car is going to just keep going at the same exact speed. Hopefully this will make sense, because what if I'm driving in my car and I step on the gas? What happens with my free body diagram here? Well, my normal and gravitational force don't change. We're going to assume that the frictional force, or the you know, that's due to all sorts of friction forces within the car and the wheels and the ball bearings and heat, but all those and also air resistance, those will all add up to this. 
Now let's assume that this one here stays the same. Well, if I step on the gas, that means that this vector will grow because I get more thrust. And if that vector grows, I'm no longer in a situation where my F net is zero. See, because if I make this vector go bigger, then they don't all cancel out. There's going to be a little bit more forward force. That means then that I won't anymore be going at a constant speed. Then I'll be accelerating then if I make this not zero. So if the net force is zero, that means all the forces cancel out, and it just means it's not accelerating. That can mean it's still, or it can mean it's got a constant speed. So that's the key thing here. So you can have F net equal to, well, not zero. And that means then it's no longer at a constant speed, which means you're accelerating. That's why you speed up. And when you slam on the brakes, what happens? Well, you hopefully don't increase your forward or sort of thrust. You would end up increasing your friction. Right? So the brakes would actually sort of increase the friction with the wheels, uh, between the wheels and the car. If that's the case, if you increase this force, then you're going to accelerate, but in the negative direction. Or some people say you decelerate. Well, that's just because your F net is no longer zero. Right? Then your F net is some value. Uh, maybe you're in a car, let's say you're going super, super fast. I've seen some videos of some of these race cars, and like these Formula One cars. They're going so insanely fast. Turns out that a little bit of air can actually sort of slip underneath the car, and that can actually create a, basically an upwards lift force in a sense. It's not that the normal force changes, but you're going to have some aerodynamic sort of upwards forces. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but these cars can actually sort of take off. They sort of just go fly through the air. They go up. And, of course, they're not meant to do that, so they totally, like, uh, you know, s turn around and uh, sort of do flips and stuff in the air. It's actually not very nice. So that's why these uh, cars, what they try to do is have as much downforce as they can. So they make these cars with you know, really, really sort of steep angles. Well, not steep, but they're very aerodynamic. And they try to keep lots of downforce. So they have these big spoilers in the back. Whoops, I should, probably shouldn't have drawn that with this. But uh, basically those Formula One cars, for example, they go so fast, they'll, they'll actually put a wing sort of on the back. The whole point of that wing, and they also have them actually in the front, it turns out. Those are meant to actually uh, move the air upwards, and it turns out that creates a force downwards. Same thing with this right here. It'll sort of deflect the air up, and it turns out Newton's third law, which we're about to learn about a little bit later on, that'll mean that you have a downwards force. It's to try to counteract this lift that your car might feel. It's a way to sort of keep your car on the ground. Well, because cars are not meant to be flying. Well, not as far as you know, unless you have a flying car, which would be really cool. But then you'd have to have a way of controlling it. See, these cars don't have sort of wings and ailerons and things to control them. So if they do fly up in the air, it's really bad for the driver of the car. So just all that to explain, though, that if we have a net force of zero, in other words, if all the forces cancel out, you could either be still or you could be moving, but you'll be moving at a constant speed. I cannot reinforce this or emphasize this enough. So whenever you see a question with net force is zero, then you have a constant speed. It means it's not accelerating. So that is an example of something that is in translational equilibrium. That's when the forces all add up to zero.